So I'm going to start since we're one minute past the hour. You, so you'll be familiar with this. Blitz report sits inside of the Oracle form. So again, just to reiterate, we try to make everything as easy as possible for business users to use. And, and in fact, many of our business users don't even know that Blitz report is not standard Oracle because they go into Oracle, they see it there, they click it, and it opens and shows them a list of reports. You probably also know that Blitz report uses all of the standard Oracle EBS security. So there's no additional security setup. We just just uh, you know, adopt whatever Oracle has already set up. So this is the report I'm going to be focused on today mostly. It's a GL account analysis. And for our financials, the GL account analysis is the most detailed report we have in Blitz report. It has one transaction, one line or one row per transaction in the general ledger. And it includes linkages to all of the subledger data. So all of the subledger information is also contained in the transaction. So by pulling reports from this GL account analysis, you really can get a good sense for any financial information sorted in many, many different ways. And I'm going to be showing that as we go through the report. So the other thing that we do with our reports is we try to give as many parameters as possible. And the idea is that gives such flexibility to the business users, they can actually customize some of these reports just by entering different parameter information and getting the data out that they want. We also do things like we've added hierarchy segments directly into this report. And the, ba the value there is that because the hierarchies that are set up in the general ledger can be reported on, you can actually create financial reports directly from this de very, very detailed GL account uh, report. And I'll be showing you that in a few minutes. And as I scroll down, you'll also notice that in our reports, we name the segments that are being used by the by the company that's installed their software. So in this company, they're using segment one as company, they're using segment two as department, segment three as account, et cetera, et cetera. So we've used those descriptions so that the users don't have to remember what is segment one. And then as we scroll down, you see they have not used segment six to 10. So those just show up as segment six to 10 because they aren't being used in this organization. A couple of other things I want to point out on this report before we go on is that you can run this report for posted, unposted, or error transactions. So again, it's a really nice one to run at month end to see any of the error transactions that you've got that aren't going to be showing up in your financials. And we can take what kind of balance type we want. Is it an actual budget or an encumbrance balance? So again, we can use this to do budgeting reporting as well as actual reporting. And finally, this is a new one that we've entered. This is a show segments with descriptions. And I'll show you what that means when we get into the software or into the report. It's a choice of a yes or no answer, but I've got it set to yes here so I can show you what that means. Finally, this reevaluation currency, all of our general ledger reports now allow you to do reevaluation so that if you've got multiple corporations or multiple entities and they are working in different currencies, you can reevaluate any of our financial reports in any selected currency. So that makes it very easy to do consolidations and reporting in a common currency. So in this report, really right now, I'm just going to run it one time just for August 07. And again, I'm using a vision database, so it's fairly old data, but August 07 will give you some data. So I'm going to hit the run key here. And this report works with the, the uh, regular concurrent manager from Oracle. So when I hit run, it goes into the concurrent manager. You can see it's running, pending, and then eventually it will go output and it will open the Excel sheet directly. And this is the actual Excel sheet. And like all of Blitz reports, all of the columns come in properly sized because we have an algorithm that looks at the data being presented and it properly sizes the columns. It puts a filter on the first row and, and it puts uh, headings on the first row so that users can quickly start using the data. It also does things like it, in, it treats dates properly as dates. So unlike when you export from Oracle EBS and you get a CSV file, which doesn't really recognize the date formats, we, you can start using date formats um, to do calculations or any kind of selections in Blitz report because dates come across properly as dates. I'm just going to scroll across here to show you some of the information that comes out of this report, just so you get a familiarity with this report. So it is one line per transaction. It has the consolidated segments in here. So we have one column that shows all of the consolidated segments. We have the entered amounts, the accounted amounts. We have the currencies in here. 
Here's where we have the account type is shown in here. Here's our hierarchy level. So we're telling it where this account should report in a financial statement. And you'll notice that some accounts here are missing or some transactions are missing their hierarchy. So that would be a problem in most financial statements. I'll show you why it's not going to be a problem for Blitz report, but it would be a problem that you would need to diagnose and fix if you were running a regular uh, FSG statement to make sure that they were properly linked. Here again, we're repeating the segments, but this time we have the segment and the description in separate columns. So again, if you're report needed to do some filtering by segment, you could do that. We have the product codes in here. We have the transaction currency. And if you scroll across here, you'll see that we get into a lot of the subledger detail, invoice number, transaction number, all of the things that you would expect if this were a payable or a receivable transaction, purchase order number, sales order number, salesperson, all of this data is included in this transaction file. And we get to the far right here, you'll see this is where we turned on when we ran this report, we turned on the option to have concatenated account number with description and department with description. So in cases where you want to have both of these pieces of information in one cell, we've added that concatenation so that you can easily get that data in one cell without having to do that work to add it together yourself. So this is the very basic, a straight out of the box GL account analysis. Like every report in Blitz Report, we have a parameters tab that tells you the name of the report, the date, all of the audit information you would need to have. If you found this spreadsheet somewhere on your system and you're trying to figure out what did it represent, it tells you exactly the parameters that were used when this was run and the SQL that was used to create the report. So that comes with every Blitz report. But going back to our actual financial statement here, I'm going to go into this options section and I'm going to create a new template in here. So this is really starting in our financial statement design. So when you, when the developers create a report in Blitz report, they decide which columns of information will be included in that report. And our suggestion is always include everything you can, include all of the columns that could possibly be needed because the users can then enter this template area. They will see all of the columns of information. This is all of the data we just looked at in the Excel spreadsheet. And they can then customize this to remove the data they don't need in their report. So it's always easier to remove than to add. So for example, if they didn't want the ledger in here, they could double click on the ledger and remove it. They can use the shift key to remove a group of columns and use the arrow key to remove them. They can use the control key to select individual columns and then remove them. Or if they have a report they're trying to create from scratch, they could simply hide everything and then work from this available columns to add them back to the report. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to double click on the period name to add the period. We've also introduced this search functionality in the latest release. So you can now search for keywords in the data so you don't have to uh, scroll up and down. So I want to add to my report the account with description. I want to add the company with description the department with description. This is those concatenated columns where it has the code and the description in the same column and the product with description. So I can add those very easy like that. So if I run this report the way it is now, I'm just going to run it straight out, uh, give it a name first. So I'll give it the name first. So I'm going to uh, close this template and I'm going to run the report. I'm going to leave the same date, the same selections I had the last time I ran the report, not changing any of the parameters, but I'm going to run this report now. And you'll see a, a quite a different output now that I've adjusted the columns. So now it's going to open this report. That's the old one sitting there and it's going to open the new one. So now you see, I just have the period name, the account number with description, then I've got company, etc. all the way along. What I want to add as well is, is the accounted amount. So I'm going to go back and add the accounted amount. And then I'm going to summarize some of this because right now what I'm seeing is, you know, a lot, a lot of duplication in these accounts. You see, I've got this account duplicated many times. So let me just go back to the report and into this template. So I'm going to click on it once and I'm going to say, I want to edit this template and I want to add the amount. Here's all the amount fields available. I'm going to say I want to add the accounted amount. And I don't want it way up there. I want it to come down here. So now I have the period, the account with description, and the accounted amount. Let's try it again. 
and see how our report looks now. And this is a really nice thing about Blitz Report. It's very easy for users to do what ifs. What well, I now I, I had, I've got this much done. Is that what I want? No, it's not really what I want. So now I can see that here's my new report. I've got the period, the accounted amount, but I've still got multiples here. I've got my account number here. I don't have things sorted in their nice order, they're all mixed up. And I've got these other um, fields sitting off at the end here, which I may want to use at some point, but right now we're just going to let them sit there. I'm going to go back to my template one more time. And this time I'm going to say, okay, I want to sort this by account number with description. So I'm going to sort that ascending. That way all my account numbers will be sorted together. And I'm also going to do this accounted amount. I'm going to do a summary on it. So then it's going to give a total of this. So I don't have multiple lines. I only have one line per account. So this time I'm not going to close it. I'm just going to run it with it open. So you can see that it does still execute. It does look at the new template changes that I've made. And that's the old one. And here's the new one. So now I have a nice accounting period. I've got my, my cash amount. It's doing multiple lines for this now because of, I've got two different company with description here. I've got two different codes here. So it's giving one amount per, uh, per of those. But if I go back and say, if I went back and took that code off, company with description, let's take these off for a second, company with description, department with description, sub account and product code. Let's just do it simple like this. And now when we run this report, you're going to see that it's going to summarize by account number. Here we go. So now we have a really nice trial balance that shows the balance of every account. And this can be really helpful if you're trying to write a report, someone asks you, hey, I just want to see our depreciation totals for this month. Here you have them right here. So you can just go into the transaction detail report, tell it you want the account with description and summarize, and then you can give them the answers you need. There's a couple of other functions in here. If you wanted to, you could add, let me just close this for a second. If we wanted to, we could say, okay, we're not going to change our template. What we're going to do is we're going to add it a second period. So maybe we want to have two accounting periods showing. I'm just going to pick this one. I can't actually use this year because the vision uh, instance is very old and it doesn't have up-to-date data. So let me just do this. So I've got two periods of accounting information now selected. When I run exactly that same report, we're going to see that that's the old report. So now you see that we've got two lines for each because we've got cash for uh, August 07 and cash for August 08. So we can still do all our filtering as we normally would. We could say select, we could say we don't want to see 07, we just want to see 08, and that would strip it out instantly, or vice versa. We could go back and say we just want to see us, you know, we want to see one or the other. So this is a really cool way to get summarized information very quickly or comparative information very quickly. But one of the things that it doesn't do is if I want to see the details and I try to drill down on these totals, we, we can't drill down to details. It's a static report with a summary level. So let's go back and try something else. So we'll go back into our standard template here. Here it is, I'm just gonna edit. So I'm gonna edit this. So now instead of doing using something in this level where we have a very summarized, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna take these totals and sorts off and I'm gonna to move to using my pivot table. So I'm gonna take the period name here and I'm going to click on the column. I want the period in a column on my pivot table. And I want the account with description in a row. And I want the accounted amount in a value field. So I'm going to run this again using exactly the same selection I had before with the two columns. And when I run this now, you'll see that it's a bit different. Instead of coming up with just that static summary, I've got takes a few seconds longer when it's doing a pivot table, but it does all of these calculations inside the database. So it's still incredibly faster than any other reporting tool. There's the old report and here's my new report. So now I have the same kind of thing. I still have a full uh, trial balance. I have my August 07 here, my August 08 and my grand total. But now because it's a pivot table, I can double click on this and drill down to the details. And the details you see in here depend completely on what you've selected in here. I could actually have all of these added back 
into here. And then when I drilled down to those details, I would see all of these detailed transaction records. So very easy to get to that point. But when I look at this result, you know, when I look at that result, it's not still not exactly what I want. So I'm going to change this because instead of having the period in the columns, I'm going to move it down to the rows and run this report one more time. So here's our new report. So now what we've got is we've got a trial balance, but it's got every month underneath the total. So now I can go, I can go expand collapse and I can collapse the entire field. Now I have a very summarized trial balance that shows August 07 and August 08 together, or obviously I could expand these and see each month separately. I could pick which GL accounts I want. I could filter by, by which accounting period I wanted. So lots of flexibility in how you can pull this data and present it without ever involving a developer. So if there are any questions, please feel free to, to ask questions, interrupt any time at all. I'm kind of walking through the, the functionality of the, of the software, but happy to answer your questions. So I'm going to search now for with and go back to those fields I showed you earlier, company with description. I'm going to add that. So where it's going to add where my cursor is focused. So I'm going to add the company with description. I'm going to add the department with description. I'm going to add the sub account with description, product with description. I'm also going to look in here for project. And I'll put the project over here. Click it back to where I want it. And I want to have also salesperson, and I will add that back into this. So now I've got all of these. The columns must be in this section in order to be used in your pivot table. So now I'm going to add some filters. I'm going to say I want the period name in the, no, sorry, not the period name. Sorry, that's going to be down here in the rows. Let me just go to the company with description in the filters, department in the filters. the uh, apartments there, the sub account, the product, project, and salesperson. And I might go back and put my period name back up here in the column section. So the period's back in the column so we can see it easily. So now we've got, we've added filters to this report. And when I, when I go ahead and run the report, I didn't change any of the settings on my selection, so I'm still going to get a complete trial balance. But all I've done this time is made sure that my periods were in separate columns and my filters were set at the top. So now you see for financial purposes, I've got a complete trial balance here, each year separated with a grand total. I could say I only want to see this for a specific department. So maybe I want to see this for international sales, let's say. And these are the totals for sales, all the sales numbers, all the expenses related to international sales for these two accounting periods. And if I need to see the details, I simply double click on this and it drills down and shows me the details related to that transaction. In here, you probably would have more details to show in that uh, drill down section, but again, it's up to you. So that's, that's a department, but Again, you know, maybe one of the things that we've talked about before, I've heard people looking for product sales. So if you have your product, because the GL account analysis includes product information, you can then say, I want to see all the camera sales. And here's my sales and cost of sales for the cameras for August 07 versus August 08. So very powerful, very fast and easy to use these filters in a financial what if situation to get the information you need. So I'll turn everything back on. I did want to go back and show you a couple, one, one more thing. So we've been talking about a trial balance all along. Again, if we decide that we wanted to change something, we could in this section, the account type, we could say, you know, we don't want everything. We just want the revenue and we turn this on for multiple. We just want the revenue and expense type accounts in this report. So again, without changing our template at all, this time we're just changing our selection criteria and our ex resulting report from the same exact GL account analysis, the same basic report that the programmers delivered to us out of the box, we can now change this from a trial balance to an income statement. So you see here that we've now got all our PL details. And again, just like before, I can drill down on any of these 
and you'll see it's got the got August. If I go back here, if I drill down on the total, it will have both, both August 07 and August 08 in the same sheet. So if you're looking for something specific, you can see those, those differences. I'm going to pause in case you have any questions. Uh, if not, I will go on to the next thing. I want to show you a true fun financial statement, but I'll, I'll pause just for a second to see if there are any questions. Okay, having no questions, I want to go on and show you the financial statement by hierarchy. We looked at those hierarchy values when we looked at the uh, detailed transaction report at the very first, when we looked at the GL account analysis details. I'm going to select this template and I'm going to edit it to show you how it looks. So in this template, we've selected all of the fields to be displayed. However, in our pivot table, we've selected these filters columns and in our rows instead of having the account number and description we've added the hierarchy level and the accounted amount so now i'm going to run this report and again it takes a few seconds but it does run inside the database so it is uh, executing faster than any other report there's no xml data to worry about it's all executing inside the database and delivering the reports directly to proper excel access file uh, very compressed data file, uh, so not much um, cleanup to, to worry about. So here now is our true financial statement. So we, I still left all of those filters on there so we could filter this, but you can see we've got these parent total, total revenue, total cost of sales. So we've added these headings and totals from the hierarchy values that we'd built inside of Oracle EBS. So no FSGs, no external financial statement reporter, just using the hierarchy values inside basic Oracle EBS and you can get these, these financial statements pulled directly. You'll notice here it says blank. These are the transactions that are going to be excluded from your financial report because they didn't have a proper hierarchy set. That's something that the FSGs don't give you. If you're missing values, they don't really tell you, but at least with the Blitz report system using the hierarchies in the financial statement, it will tell you if any of them are missing their hierarchies, they are going to be missing out of your regular financial statement and report. But again, this works just the same way as the other trial balance I showed you. If you wanted to run this for a specific product, you could select here the product and just say, I want to see the financials for games. And there's your financial information for the games. You could also compress this, collapse this, just like I showed you before, and just collapse. And there you see, you can just have the, uh, the headings and totals. So that's developing a financial statement. The one thing that I was remiss in showing you that I think you might be interested in as well. I'm going to go back to my other template. I'm just going to close this and just go back to my other template. Very, this one, summary by GL account, net it. So another feature that we added in here, you see this is the ledger, the account was with the sum that I used earlier. I also have this break column over here. And the break column can be used, can be very helpful. So I'm just going to add one more piece of information to this report. I'm going to add the category name, move it down to where I want it at the end of the report. And I'm going to tell the system to break on category name. So what this will do is it will look again through that exact same GL transaction file, the GL account analysis, and it will do a break on new a work book, a new worksheet for every change in that category value. I'm going to do it just for one report, just one uh, period, so we don't get duplications, but I'm going to run this again. The old report. Here's our new report. So what it's doing now is for every category of transaction, we can see that it's putting my summary amount. And again, I could, I still have a uh, Sorry, so for my summary amount in the in the uh, pre pre correct tab in the worksheet. If I wanted to have more details on this report, I would go back to my template. I would sorry, go back to my template. I would change this from a summary report, take the summary report out, and then run it. And you'll see that instead of having that one line per account, we're going to then have all of the detailed transactions. So trying to show you all of the combinations of options that, here you go. So now instead of having one line, we have the multiple lines that made up that total in the report. So very easy and, and 
powerful to for business users to get the data they need in the format they need without always going back to the developer and saying, hey, I need to add this column, I need to rearrange these, I need a summary here or there. They can basically do that themselves. Once you've designed these templates, you have the option of making them public. Public templates are available to anyone else who has access to this report. So anyone who has security access to run the GL account analysis would be able to use this template if it was set up public. If it's not set up public, if it's private, it only shows up to the person who is set up as the user of that template. If I were trying to use this template and I saw that you had this great template set up, but I wanted to add one or two pieces of information, I'm not able to change this because if I didn't own it, I can't change it. But what I can do is I can come to the action screen here and I can copy the template. And by copying the template, I get an exact copy of what's already done. And then I can just rename this and make any changes to add uh, or remove any data <clears throat> that I might want to do in my own template. And I could then make my template public so that others could use it or I could make it private so it stays just for myself. One question. Yes. Till now, everything is uh, fine for me, but one more question, if you can, if you have a time to explain me. Let's imagine that user, it's fine with this, but the user wants to use from AP Subledger, accounts payable trial balance, and to prepare a month and closing process regarding liability accounts for different type of suppliers. Okay, this is uh, fine. But uh, let's imagine practical way. So I think uh, you mentioned that it's possible also to run these uh, blitz report from a from sub ledgers like tables, and the user will be able to also uh, see these benefits uh, from the sub ledger side, not only running from GL side. You catch my point? I do, but. When we're, when we're starting with this report, the GL account analysis, it's going to start from the GL side. Yes, 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 of course. I understand this clearly. This is uh, understandable for me, what you currently explain. And it's, uh, as I already mentioned, as me as a functional consultant, it's, it's very, very uh, benefit tools and a really advanced tool for user and for developer or functional consultant or anyone who understand uh, Oracle EBS or setup of account in flexible structure in background and the segment in background and PNL or balance sheet, whatever they need to run it and see the balances on the end. So, okay, fine for me this, but if you will have a time, please uh, just consider, is, uh, is it also too possible to explain the user? Uh, I'm, I'm saying just because uh, I'm interested to see this, because uh, I mentioned already to your colleagues, I would like to show these as a benefit also in the tasks for month and closing process from right. yeah that's 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 only so so a couple of things first of all so in our gl account analysis we do have all of those sub ledger tables linked we may not have all of the pieces of information that the user would want from those sub ledger links so we have two choices you can either send us a note to say hey we want to have additional fields from those sub ledger tables included in fact we talked to someone this morning who wanted to have more project information available through here so then we would have to add more project columns which they could then add or remove or you could take this report itself and someone in your organization could copy this GL account analysis using this in the setup side. So a developer would go into the setup section of the report. They would then go to the actions here and they could copy this report. It's just a little slow down there. So they could go, they could copy this report and they could add additional data fields required for your specific needs. But for this GL account analysis, it's really, really designed for financial analysis. We do have other reports. So for example, in the accounts payable side, we do have accounts payable, you know, invoices and lines, accounts payable suppliers, there is an accounts payable trial balance that we've provided. So open balances, revaluation, quite a few of the reports. Mm -hmm. So so in in here, if we went, sorry, go ahead. That's fine. Now you 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 answer my question. Okay, okay. there is a, a reports per sub ledgers, like like you mentioned now, AP trial balance, which can be run it first one and it can be run directly from sub ledger 
and uh, rerun re also from GL uh, trial balance and uh, they can be sure that the balances on the liability detail accounts is the same. Let's say for these uh, August 7 or August 8, but they are trying to close. Okay, fi fine for me. Don't, okay. Don't. Perfect. Okay, fine, Perfect. Fine, fine, fine for me. Thanks. Okay. But yeah, there's about 280 reports that we send with our software. So, and they cover all aspects of uh, EBS. So there's there's payables reports, receivables reports, there's uh, uh, supply chain reports and procurement reports. Uh, you'll see there's tax reports here that uh, look at uh, taxing. So all kinds of, uh, so there's 280. And also we can import reports from BI Publisher, from Discover, Discover absolutely, all of those. And once you import uh, them into Blitz report, you can still make changes. Yes. And and uh, Beth, sorry uh, for bothering you, but uh, you know that in Oracle Fixed Assets, uh, Subledger has a pure author of the reports in an Excel sheet or something like that. So can you show me something for Subledger later on for Fixed Assets that it's able uh, to use and uh, run it from that Subledger, which can be interesting to user? Yes, so we do okay. have a very few fixed assets. We don't have a lot of reports. I think they're FAs. Yeah, fixed asset retirements, I guess, is the only report we have standard. But uh, we you have, have you, you have also FA asset book details, which is good. Uh, yes. uh, fixed asset yeah, journal sorry, entry reserve yeah. ledger, text reserve ledger. Okay, FS. Uh, okay, that's a few things which I would like to see. Okay, fine, fine. Excellent. Good. <laughs> and they're so all they're standard. Really, they'll, okay. be, they'll be with, uh, when you install the software, they will come with the software. Okay, fine. Thanks. You're welcome. So I wanted to now take, uh, take a little step uh, sideways a bit. So, you know, we're always inventing and adding to our software, always trying to make it better and, and enhance it. So we've added a new feature this in the next update. So the next update release is due the middle of September. And I'm just going to go in here and show you something that we've created. I'll just take uh, this one. This is a product template. So once it loads, I'll just edit it for you here. So what I've done with this one is you see here, there's something called Upload Excel. So we can now create a template in Excel that has detailed transactions, but maybe has a, a page that has macros to, to create some beautiful looking headings and totals, or maybe some graphics, or maybe some recalculations. So what I did with this report is I created a template in Excel, and I linked it to this Blitz report. So what it's going to do is it's going to send, when I pick different data to, to report, it's going to send that data out to this spreadsheet and redraw the graph or whatever, recalculate all of those pieces of information based on uh, my report. So let me just run this again. It's still the jail account analysis. It's running for one month. It's running all accounts. Let me just change this to say, I just want to have for account type revenue. Let me just take my revenue accounts here and I'm going to run this report. It's going to run just like the rest of the Excel of the Blitz reports. It's going to run through the concurrent manager. It's going to open Excel when it's finished running, but it's going to do, it's going to either create my pie, pie chart. So what it does is it goes back to my, this GL account analysis that, that I created. You can see here, it's my pivot table. It's got all of the details in my pivot table. And then it's taken those details and created a pie chart. So if I ran the report a second time, and then, then this, and the second time, I don't run it for uh, revenues, I run it for expenses. So now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take it from revenue. I'm gonna run it for the expenses and execute this report. Same time period, same, report, it's going to refresh the data in behind that Excel template and redraw the graph to present the new information. There's the old one. Here's my new one. So now you can see that we have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I guess we're, this is product cost. So we're looking at, at, at uh, cost versus revenue on these products. It's a little bit different, I guess, to see the, the pie chart. But let me just try a different one that has a better review here, better view of the the differences. But we've done this so that people can create, can create Excel templates, either for reporting, for analytics, for graphics, 
And they can use Blitz Report to populate those templates so that they don't have to download and, and copy and paste data in every month. They can just run the Blitz Report that, that populates that information. Let me just go back here. Yeah, expense is fine. So we're running for this for one month for exactly the same thing we just ran for our pie chart. And you'll see that it's got a little more data this time, so it may take a second or two longer. Here's the old one. Here's our new one. So we've got a pie chart showing all of these expenses. If we look at the, the data that we, here's our, the data it's based on. And again, this is actually a pivot table. So I could drill down and see the details of these. Go back to my uh, chart. And if I wanted to then change this from just a one period report to a comparative report, I just need to go back into my selection group here and say, okay, I, own, I no longer want to work, I no longer want to run for one period. I want to run for two periods. And I want to run now for revenues and I can just do it for, for expenses again. So I execute this a second time. The data is going to be refreshed in behind the sheet. The graph is going to be redrawn, but I didn't have to do any of the maintenance work to make that happen. And we've talked to a lot of our Oracle EBS customers who spend a lot of time right now maintaining Excel sheets or spend a lot of money on very expensive tools that can do this. Here's the old one. Here's the new one. So now you see we've got comparatives between August 07 and August 08. And if the numbers were a little closer, you can see that the graph would, would present itself very nicely. So that's a new feature that we've added that's coming out in September. And one more time, I'll take it one more time. I'll just show you the revenue. If I change this to revenue instead of expense. So really for the business user, they have all of this flexibility to execute reports, to customize reports, to create graphics or better uh, formatted reports than just a strict Excel output. And so now you see here's the revenue and my report has been changed to include just the revenue figures and my chart displays those figures directly. So that's a feature that's coming out in mid-September. So it's available on our demo server right now. If you wanted to try it, you can go into our demo server and uh, work with that. That covers most of everything I wanted to show you today. We're about 15 minutes before the hour. And so wonder if you have any questions. Uh, no, thanks, but thanks for all these informations. Oh, very good. So I will have a recording available of this. Um, the other things that we could talk about in Blitz Report is, you know, while it's, it's a very powerful financial reporting tool, it also does reports for any other kind of, uh, any other part of the business. So, so there's a great supply chain. We have something called a supply chain hub, which is very powerful for anyone who uses inventory or planning. It works with MRP and ASCP, and it really is one single dashboard where you could go to get all of your information about your uh, planning data or your inventory data. Also should tell you that we are multilingual. So if you use multi-languages, the software automatically presents the headings, totals, and data in the language that the person is signed in. So we use the, we read the language from their Oracle setup and they will the, the reports will be presented in the proper language. So there's no need for developers to create two or three copies of the same report in different languages. It automatically converts. One question, is it possible, I just uh, want to ask you, uh, is it possible if the, let's say, manager from my side uh, wants to hear like these the demo presentations from your side, is it possible to ask you to do that? Yes, to send you the recording. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You can very Thanks. much do that. Okay. <laughs> Also want to show that you can um, change the number formatting either in the entire worksheet. So if you've got different number formats, um, the, the, uh, the system does read your number format from the Excel setup, the Excel profile. So it will properly put commas versus, dot, versus decimal positions if you're um, using euros or some other currency other than dollars. But you can also go into, uh, if you're a developer and you go into the setup side, you can go into the tools and we have 
the ability to do translations. Here's where our column translations are held. So the column translations are here. You can see we have 13 different translations for every uh, language that Oracle supports. We currently support as well, but we also can change the, the number format of any uh, column of data that you want. This would apply throughout Blitz report. So if wherever it found the column name line entered debit, it would use the uh, number format related to that. For those of you on the, if there's any developers in the midst that since we're wrapping up here, Blitz report can also write ad hoc reports. So if you go file new here, you could write a SQL in here and execute it instantly. I can give you a brief demonstration of that. So I can write, a, it, it's a read only. So there's no danger of uh, changing or damaging information. So I can write the SQL here. You'll notice that there's no version on it yet. As soon as I execute the SQL by hitting run, it creates a version. So this version control is automatic. It tracks the date and time, the user that created the report and the actual SQL that was created. So that if someone should make a change to a SQL and you need to roll back, you have easy uh, opportunity to roll back to the previous version. Makes it very, very nice as a central repository for all of your SQLs in your organization, keeping secure your corporate IP from um, possible damage or loss. If you put it inside Blitz report, it will not only be secure inside your database, it will also be monitored and Every time there's a change made, it, it will be uh, logged and audited. Uh, we also add a comment section here so you can do some change management. If you want to log the reasons, the, the request, who requested the changes and what changes were made, you can certainly do that as part of the, of the change management and the version control. Uh, and in addition to running the reports, you can also add parameters. So we have made it easy for users to select existing parameters. So if I'm writing a report that's a supplier report and I wanna look at the other supplier reports that are out here and say, you know, I really need to uh, have a supplier name select on this report. And I know there's one on the supplier basic report. I can just click this and the system will write the where clause for me. You also have complete capability to write your own where clause to uh, customize your list of values, many, many things. This, this session is not really designed for developers. Just wanted to go over that, a few little housekeeping things before we call it a day. So that was the end of my presentation as I prepared it for today. So I'm going to close the, uh, the meeting now. If you do think of any questions, please send me an email and uh, anyone who wants a copy of this recording, we'd be happy to send it out to you. Just let us know and uh, we'll send it out by email.